What's up guys? So we are back at the farm chains build out. They've got concrete. We've even got lights and you know what? It's kind of crazy. Black ceiling isn't all that dark in here when you have actual light. So that's a good thing. Um, we're going to be building office bathroom over here. The lovely plumbers. You know what? I've worked with these guys. They're great guys, but somewhere along the lines, we gave them this line right here. See this line? This is where the wall is supposed to be. Somebody decided to put a wall here, which doesn't work because we've got a window on that side of the building where this wall is. So we're gonna do some creative construction. We're just gonna build around it and make it work. So we're gonna snap some lines, build some walls, keep moving forward. All right, I think we've got a solution. It's not a great solution, but at least it'll get it pretty much close back to what it should have been. So we might have to do a little bump out, a little bit of reframing around the uh, the toilet area, but that's okay. Let's just get like a four foot mark somewhere in here. Just all right. Now, Greg, let's go ahead and fill out. Let's get 16 footers. We'll cut them down to 16s. We'll get it filled out here. We'll get our double plate and then we'll figure our, our elevation. I'm gonna assume we're gonna go to this point at, for now. So we're gonna cut one at 10 foot six and a quarter. Yeah. So because our concrete wall sticks out past this wall, our bottom plate is gonna be different measurement than our top plate. We've made this mistake many times where we've gone and just cut them all the same and then when we build it, the wall gets shifted over to the wall. 13 three eighths. Okay. Yep. So inch and three eighths is what we need to add to the top plate so that when we get to the other end, it is plumb. Because we've got that messed up concrete wall over there, so this will go up against the concrete and then we've got an additional inch and three eighths that goes to the wall. So kind of our weird bay just gets burnt up on this end. And that way also, because this is where our wall is, this is my 16 center. This is where our first eye joist will also go. So when we go do our flooring, it'll be pulled right off the floor, 16 center for our subfloor and everything. So trying to think through this, we've got a toilet that really dictated that we can't build, bring this wall this way anymore. And we got plumbing that was supposed to be in the wall. So what we decided was we're gonna go back and we're gonna build a wall where the original line was. But right here, we're gonna stop it. This is a four foot mark, which we're gonna have a four foot landing here from the stairs. And we're just gonna build a little alcove. So this toilet will be in a little one foot deep alcove. I don't think it's gonna matter. And the reason that we're doing this instead of just building the whole wall bigger is I've got 16 foot eye joists um, and we've got a window on the other end of this wall that a 17 foot wall would have gone right into the middle of it. So this is our best solution that we could come up with and we're just gonna get it done now. So um, yeah, we got our bottom and top plate cut. We're getting it marked. We're gonna get the laser set up. We're gonna determine our elevation so that we can get each of these studs cut to a precise dimension so that the top of our uh, wall plate is as level as possible. You can't just go off the concrete. It'll never be good. So um, that's what we're doing. So I'm just going by the door just because that's kind of like the point of entry. Might as well use it as my zero point for what the concrete should be everywhere. I'm sure it's not perfect, but that's just the way it goes. Okay, so now that's my zero. I can go anywhere and I know that I wanna be eight feet above that to the bottom of my ceiling. Cause it's gonna be an eight foot mezzanine, which means that for my wall, I've got a top plate and a bottom plate. I'm not double top plating this. There's really no need. All my eye joists are gonna sit directly on my studs. So double top plate doesn't really add a ton of advantage here and it makes my math a little simpler because what I can do is where I have a stud that's gonna go. Ooh, okay, we already know we gotta drop this three inches because it's double, two plates, three inches. Is this a double top plate or is a single top plate? Well, Greg, maybe you should watch the video and uh, you'll oh, learn something. Okay, okay. 
Okay, well this is good news. Concrete guy, great job. This stud right here would be a zero. What that means is eight foot minus the three inches for the bottom and top plate, that is the stud length. So I'm gonna cut this stud right here at 93 inches. But, you know, let's just go down here, just for the reference so you guys understand what's going on. And then we're gonna get to work cutting all these. Let's just go ahead and right here where there's gonna be a door about. Make sure that this is sitting nice and level. Yes, this is the same concrete guy that's doing my shop, so this is great. This is looking real, this looks like a low spot right here. Okay, so right here we're sitting a sixteenth of an inch, right? Isn't that what you got? I mean, you see this? I'm not trying to prove a point here. What I'm trying to do is just show you guys that if you just go off a of concrete, it's going to be potentially off. So usually, you know, you can see this low spot right here. There's either a low spot here or a high spot. I'm like bouncing between 16th and an eighth, you know, but it does, it's going to vary. With it being a 16th, mm -hmm. should we just cut everything the same? Well, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna check every one and make sure that it, if it's within a 16th, anything more than a 16th, we're cutting that stud differently. I'm not one to just say, ah, let's just cut them all the same. It's gonna be perfect. They did pour this in two pours, but you know through here, this is gonna be, gonna be yeah. yeah, we got drains, that's gonna be lower there, but what's that? 16th. Hi. Hmm, that's awesome, dude. I already know everybody's gonna say, where's your treated lumber? You can't put white wood on the ground. Well, watch. yeah, watch us. No, we're gonna, we're gonna tape it. We just put a, um, a nice layer of tape seal on here. It's not gonna be sitting in water anyway. This is inside of a shop. And in fact, not just a shop, but a piece of, like this is office space that we're framing in. So um, this is just to create a barrier between the white wood and the concrete so it doesn't. Even though there's a moisture barrier underneath the concrete, there shouldn't be anything coming out of the concrete other than the moisture that's in the concrete which being new, it's gonna have some moisture for sure. You got a squeegee, Greg? Yep, see this black dot? That's my marker. No, that's, get out of here. that's literally get mine. Out of here. That's a lie. I've been that's, in my pouch for months. This is literally my squeegee. I knew you had it, man. Okay, we'll just wrap this tape right around the edge. And the reason I don't use green treated is because usually that lumber sucks. It shrinks after it dries out a little bit. It warps. It just doesn't work very good. And it's usually a, a different cons uh, depth consistency or width or whatever. So that's why we do this. Greg is a thinker. That's a good idea, buddy. What he's saying is leave this a little bit long. And when the time comes, if this is out of plumb, and we need to kind of fudge it, we'll have a little bit extra and we can just cut it off exactly where plum is. Good, good idea, Greg. Okay, so now I have a reference mark where I'm gonna install my header on the outside wall because obviously if we're gonna spend the time to make this wall we're building nice and level um, at the top, we also want a nice level header that we're gonna connect to on the wall. So now that I have that all done, Greg, are we good with this? So if we ever needed to set this thing, hello, oh, it's down here. This laser back up, we can just set it off of this reference mark because this ain't gonna go nowhere. This will be king stud, we'll have a jack stud here, okay? So this zero will still be there. And then we're gonna go 38 and a half, so I always just burn, burn me a, 10 inches, 10 inch. So there's your door, all right. Then let's get a total dimension. Mm. So let's just use 24 feet as a guide. I say we go, yeah, the, the problem I have is when you go eight foot center, you have two foot of window here, two foot of window here. And if you go another eight feet from the center, now you have two well, more feet of window. Edge, eight foot. Oh, 
So it'll be centered at six foot. So you're going to do four foot windows, right? Mm hmm. All right, so what I've got to do is this girt that I'm pulling off is actually was centered at eight foot for wall, um, wall finishes. And because we're going to do a mezzanine here, I've got to get it below eight foot so I can put my header that's going to attach our floor joist at the eight foot height. So I'm basically just dropping it down and then I'll be able to set my LVL header right on top of it. We're just laying this out to put our hangers on now instead of when they're up on the wall because it's easier and also we can set the joist in the hanger instead of having to hold it and then tack some screws or something into it. So, oops, I just did it on the wrong side of my line. I wanna be on this side. And I need to, this is a two and a half inch joist. This is the edge of my wall. So what I need to do is I'm gonna have 16 inch centers, but I gotta go back an inch and a quarter or ahead an inch and a quarter. It doesn't really matter as long as we are consistent. And what Greg is doing is Greg is cutting a block at two and a half inches to use as a template so he can set that into this hanger on our line that we're going to make and then we can pre-install our hangers. So are we going to do both sides or just one? What do you normally do? Do you install both sides? Uh, no, we just do one, right? It's got to be sitting. But is that, is that the same height as the eye joist is what I'm saying? And then you'll have to clean that out. Yeah, because the biggest thing is we want to make sure that we put these hangers on, not just in the right place, but at the right elevation. So double check, make sure that all of our dimensions are correct. Make that block up so that it's like our, our template so that Greg can put all those hangers in precisely. This is really where this thing shines, man. LVL material, 12 inches. Don't have to square it up. I just go ahead and line this thing up right on the edge. It's got bumps underneath, so it hits nice and flat. so much easier putting this two by four here, which was not the plan originally. We were gonna take it off, install this, put our floor, and then put the board here. But this allowed me to very easily put these up here and ensure that they go on right where they need to be, which is looking really good. Okay. I always, whenever I do a door or a window, I always throw it in opposite if there's some major crown so all of our crown, our studs on our crowns are faced up. So this one had a little bit of a crown. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a face crown down. That way it kind of pushes and pulls, helps straighten anything out that might be going on. Do you got another plus 16? Next one's good. Next one's good. Must be a nice stud. And then this one looks like. Yeah, right there. Put the window jam on the wrong side of the line. I knew that was gonna happen. Knew it was gonna happen. That easy fix though. We'll just slice these nails, slide it over. Be good to go. Actually, it'll give us an opportunity to perfectly level it up anyway. So, okay, give me a little push push. Okay.
Extend that last section. We're just setting this up so that we can get ourselves a nice straight line from end to end. And so I'm setting a mark one inch off of the wall. So then I can go up to the top of the wall and measure one inch and push and pull the wall to the exact uh, mark. And then hopefully get a good, get a good straight line up top by the time we utilize this laser. Now what I do is I come over here. I will also set a one inch mark. We're going to set it right back here. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the receiver on, make sure it's in fine mode. Level bubble there, okay, boom. So now that receiver is gonna find this, or that laser is gonna move. I think it's moving. Uh, we'll have a full 180 degree plane where this laser line is, and we can take this receiver up to the top of the wall, move it in and out, and be one inch from the laser, which will, in essence, make our wall perfectly straight. I shouldn't say perfect. I'm working on it. And so obviously the reason this is nice is because, let's turn that sound off, is because I was able to do that myself. I don't have to have Greg down there making sure that if I'm putting the other laser, the 160, you know, it's great, but it, it just takes a lot more time and effort to get it right where you want it. This is very easy. So now I can take it and let's say I look for my receiver right there. I could take my tape move this to where the laser is and say, oh, that's actually in. I need it to go so I could set my, my receiver at one inch, push and pull this wall exactly where I need it, and then get the exact dimension of my eye joist. So that's what we're gonna do now. And we're gonna do it on each one of these columns. The columns don't move, so if we have to push and pull things, they're gonna stay put and all the, the changes will take place out at the wall where we are matching it up to that laser. But in between here, this LVL could potentially push and pull a little bit if we're moving it around. So we stay away from that until we get everything locked in and then we just fill it in. Are you, are you I'll, I'll just go like this, buddy. Okay, as well as that. Yep. Okay. Boom. So you see, I got my little one inch tick mark right here. And all I'm doing is lining that up with this. And then I've got a mark here where I need to make sure this is behind it because this is where my rim joist is going to go. And I think we're perfect. So what we've decided to do is the plumber uh, showed up this morning and they're gonna go ahead and cut this out. They're gonna make this right. They're gonna move this toilet so that this wall will continue to be a straight wall. It'll make our job easier. We won't have to do any weird alcove with a header and built under the staircase. It does make everything a lot easier. And he said within an hour, he can cut this up, move the plumbing and we'd be on our way. So he said, go ahead, build your wall straight. He'll make it work. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna take advantage of that. Um, and I think it's always great when, you know, the guys you're working with, the subcontractors, they want to make it right too and make it right by the customer and all that good stuff. So we're going to finish this wall up and then we've got four eye joists to install and then we're going to be on to rim joist and decking. So Greg, this board right here, then just go ahead and cut it for me at 50, 51 and a half. Probably also, oh wait, we got the laser still set up, right? Yeah, so you wanna get like one inch mark off of that. Yeah. Boom. Inch and an eighth rim joist. So once we get the rim board on, then we can make sure it's perfectly straight and then we'll attach them back into the, uh, the joist hangers because I, I left all the measurements about a 16th inch less than what I thought they were gonna be. And that just gives us a little bit of playroom uh, if we need it 
in order to move this wall a little bit. Okay. They should, they should be good to just go right up like that, Greg. Okay, man. These are all just tacks, so we have to come through and I'm gonna use a nail gun for that though. I'm not gonna use all these screws. This one's done. Put down, put down, put down. Suck that in. I need to go in eighth inch, not even sixteenth. All right, whenever you get time, come down to that one. This one maybe needs to go in also. Perfect, this just makes it so easy. Snap lines or string lines are good, but not as good as a laser, in my opinion. So now that we got this front rim joist straightened out, I'm gonna go ahead and get a four foot. Actually, I'm only gonna go three foot 11 and three quarters and uh, get a snap line for our first row of sheathing. Greg said if I put this in his hair, he would have to go bald. He'd shave it all off. And he was gonna go home early today. So I figured if I wait till about four o'clock, then I put it in his hair, he can leave, go cut it off, and then we're gonna get to see Greg as a bald man. Would you leave your beard though? I think you'd look good with a bald head. Okay, centered it there. Now, I don't think we have to do anything, Greg. No. Let's check it. Okay, we'll check it. Typically we like to run a tape measure off the sheet to make sure that our, our joists are running pretty darn good. But as we get close to the end, it's good, man. You're golden. We don't have to worry about it because we've already come halfway through. We've straightened out in case there was a little bow in the pieces. Also, I'm just going through and I'm tacking these down so that the glue adheres. We're gonna come through and put even more nails in once we get all these laid out. But since we're not taking too long to lay these out, we're just trying to, trying to rush through this and get them all down. Whoa, settle down there, He-Man. Okay. All right, so I've got this nice floating landing now. I went ahead and constructed that because I just needed it up there so I could have something to go off of. I will have some additional structure here, obviously, but uh, yeah, I kind of like the uh, nice modern look. I don't know. So what I need to do now that I have that there, I need to build the actual stair set here. And the first thing I like to do is, I did the math, I'm gonna have 14 treads plus the 15th tread will actually be the top of the landing. And so I can use that to, to multiply by seven and a quarter, no, sorry, 10 and a half. That is gonna be my actual tread depth plus an overhang. So I don't use, even though I'm gonna use a two by 12, I only cut a 10 and a half knockout on my stringer. And then that gives me the nosing that I want. So I measured that out. I got a mark here. This is where the end of the stairs should be. So what I like to do, because this is the location where my stairs are gonna be touching the floor I'm gonna go ahead and get a measurement from here up to the top of my floor here, which is, looks about nine foot three quarters. The reason I do this is because even though I know I was aiming for an eight foot ceiling with a 11 and seven eighths rim board and three quarter sheathing on top, you know, subfloor, the concrete right through there through that wall might be a little off. So now I can use that dimension, nine foot three quarter, Divide that by 15, is that right? Yeah, 
seven and a quarter. Perfect. So seven and a quarter inches is what I wanted because I've got two by eight risers. So all of my steps will have a 10 and a half inch run with a nosing. So it'll actually be like a two, full two by 12 step. And then we'll use a two by eight for our riser. And with that information, I will now go ahead and build or cut my stringers. One thing I've learned is if you're gonna set your square up, set yourself up for success by setting it up on an actual straight edge, not the edge of lumber. Lumber is never perfect. So I'm gonna set up my seven and a quarter rise, my 10 and a half inch run, and I'm gonna make sure I'm doing it on a nice actual straight edge, not just a piece of wood. I mean, it's probably fine if I did wood, but since when, when do we ever do, you know, something that's probably good enough? We're just gonna do a little bit better. Right, Greg, that's the way to go. Like that, okay, now that this is set up on a straight edge, now we can go ahead and start marking this out. I know I'm gonna have one more tread sitting up here somewhere. So, let's see. I need to make sure we're about probably there. And we're just gonna go ahead, match up our lines. So we're just gonna do this uh, 15 times. And I know my 15th step is actually going to be the landing. I still want, I still want this uh, done so that I can attach it up there to my, um, my landing properly. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. As long as this is, okay, good. Because our first, this is our bottom of our step. And one of the things you always have to remember is you got to reduce the dimension of the tread on your first step because stepping off the ground, you only want to go seven and a quarter. So I don't just make this a seven and a quarter rise like all these other ones. I need to go, do seven and a quarter minus inch and a half. So this is actually gonna go here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which means this right here is our landing. Perfect. I got one screw here holding the face of all four of these because I'm gonna gang cut these and then I need to come all the way down to the bottom. And I need to make sure that my bottom is also nice and flush because most likely whatever happens in the middle, it'll all get cut the exact same. So it will basically, in essence, if there's any major crowns or you know irregularities in this lumber, as long as the first tread and the last tread are, are straightened out, it should all come out nice in the end. So nice hat, Greg. Farm chains. Very important to have a nice straight blade. So throw a fresh one on when you're doing this. Otherwise, and don't, don't push hard. Let the saw do the work. Otherwise your blade can walk on you and then all this work to make nice, repetitiously similar stringers goes right out the window. Make sure you're going straight up and down. Those should be nice and consistent because we started with them flush on this side and that side, if there's weird things, which I think we kind of noticed that this third one down, it sticks out a little bit, but it can have a little bit of a different crown because when it gets put on the ground and up against the landing through the middle, it'll still be the same, so. How are you in the bottom? Uh, it was pretty flush with concrete. Yeah? You'd say so? Okay, do me a favor, make wherever a stud hits, just do this. I wanna find out where my, uh, I need to do some, some additional blocking and spacing. So something that we always do, try to do, is this is gonna get drywall and we don't wanna put our stringer, you got it? We don't wanna put our stringer right against this stud frame because then the drywall guy has to cut 
around every tread. So what we're gonna do is we'll space it off. We'll use some scrap three quarter board. Then he can run his drywall right behind our treads and it just looks a lot better. So, okay. I just hold that there for a sec, dude. I'm starting really slow. I don't want it to, you know, splooge out all over you. Say thank you. You don't care? You wanted to be splooged on? Oof. Okay, line this up about. With the edge. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good on mine. This one looks close. Okay. You like it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, now we can go ahead and put this up on the wall, but might as well, we should have marked where, let's just put it up there, we'll put them in, we'll tack it up, it'll be all good. We need a little bit more. Uh, a little more, right, uh, a little more. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, right there. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Stop that. Okay. Let's bring that stair in. Um, you know, it's gonna be like eight foot and... Yeah, well now we can get an exact measurement and when we get the stair up, I wanna put it under the stair, not under this. Okay. Now you're gonna go over here. That one. Right, right there. Good. Is it gonna fit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll fit between those three. All right. In a perfect world, like a nice one by eight or something, probably, or one by six would have been nice. But this is, this is perfect too. Just a little scrap piece of material. We'll get this guy fastened down to the concrete so it's nice and solid. And yeah, we'll have ourselves a staircase. One thing I will say that I always try to do is if you look at your grain, you always want to make sure that your grain is frowned down or smiling, smiling, because it's going to open up. And when this opens up, it will, it'll kind of do this versus the other way. I don't know. I just am a fan of a, of a stair like this versus one that's cupped up and down. That way it won't hold water you know, inside the building. You don't want water getting held into your stairs. So, right, right, Greg, does that make sense? So, over time, these greens will kind of do this. And I think that is a good way to run your stairs. Now, I think that's all the framing we've got to do, right? Uh, there's one board up top. Oh yeah. But we're gonna get out of here for the day and we're gonna go ahead and start our finishes when we get back here. And I haven't decided if that's gonna be another video or not, so this could be the end and I might be saying farewell, but if not, we'll just go ahead and run this into the next one. Undetermined. What do you think? Hey, uh, is all, is this all this extra lumber for the inside rooms that we gotta do? <laughs> oh yeah. We gotta frame all the rooms. Fasten his office. Oh yeah. All right, we're not done with framing, so. Just keep this one rolling. You got lucky this time, Greg. This is great, man. Greg's up there getting uh, the rest of that steel done above the mezzanine while I'm working on the framing. Looking good, Greg. Going, going good? Yeah. Just like perfect, huh? Man, this is awesome. We're gonna wrap this thing up in just a matter of minutes at this point. A couple more sheets of steel, I think, up there. I got a little bit of framing and we're gonna be done. Got right into laying out this office and bathroom. And I like to just go ahead put the plates right on the ground, put the plates on the ceiling, have it all marked out, and then I'll go around with my LDM, make sure that I have exact measurements, 
and then cut each stud to fit. Put them in, install them, pretty darn simple. I don't think I need to explain it, so just went ahead with the time lapse on this and gonna wrap up this framing. Eighteen, one and a half. We're still in the middle of our blocking bay. All right. Okay, let me shove this in. I don't care. All right, that wraps up the farm chains videos, guys. And I left out the railing install because I had just done a railing install video, but it was for a cable rail system. So if you guys wanna see this aluminum rail install, let me know, I can put that together. Uh, but with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. Hope you enjoyed the farm chains video series and hope you're ready for RRHQ 2.0 because that's coming up next. So hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you on the next video.